Hey friends, welcome back to Anti-Static. You know, creating noise in After Effects is one of the most useful things that you can do. But the basic fractal and turbulent noise patterns by themselves can look a bit boring or simplistic. So today I'm going to be showing you how to supercharge your noise with just a few simple steps. Along the way, we will create together this procedural rust texture. There really are tons of possibilities, so let's get started. All right, so here I am in After Effects. I've got a new composition that's 2000 by 2000. And I'm just gonna add a solid and call it noise. And then we'll go ahead and add fractal noise effect to that. So here's the basic fractal noise pattern that we're all familiar with. I'm just gonna make it a little bigger. Let's go ahead and turn down the complexity for a minute here. And let's add a new adjustment layer that is gonna be doing a lot of the work here. This is gonna be a displacement map. So I'm just going to name that displacement and add the displacement map effect. Now by default, there's no map loaded into the layer. So what that means is this layer is going to displace whatever's below it based on the values it finds there. So I'm going to create a mask on this layer and just mask out half of it so we can just see kind of a before and after picture of what happens. So in our displacement map, let's just go ahead and turn these values up a little bit and you'll just see that it starts right away to add some dimension that wasn't previously there. And for, for right now, let's just go ahead and link these two values together by just using our pick whip, write that expression. So now we can just play with this value and see how it's gonna change our basic turbulent noise effect. Let's just go ahead and write an expression on the evolution here to get this moving a little bit. So we can just take a look at what's happening. This is the basic idea of what I'm going to be showing you today. It's just using a basic noise effect, but then adding a displacement map and along with some turbulent displays to make some much more unique noise patterns. So we can go back into our noise layer here. And we have to remember now that any changes that we make to this noise layer are going to reflect not only the colors, but also the displacement value. So the more contrast I pull up here, it's going to make the image more contrasty, but it's also going to move around these white and black pixels more. All right, so we can change this noise type. Let's make it uh, turbulent basic. Maybe change this to spline. And uh, we'll go ahead and just scale this out a little bit. Okay, kind of make a wider image. Let me zoom in here. And now you can see, just by adding this displacement map, we start to get a little bit of a watery, maybe a satin kind of texture. And we can adjust this to dial it in just what we want. This is a very simple way to add a lot more variety to the noise that you can get from a basic fractal noise pattern. All right, so let me just go ahead and I'm gonna delete this mask now. And um, I wanna show you a couple of specific examples of things we can create using these techniques. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit here so we look at this image. And let's add another adjustment layer and we'll just call this one turbulence. And we can add a turbulent displacement. And for this one, let's maybe turn the complexity of the noise down even further. And instead of just animating the evolution, I want to also animate the offset with the turbulence. So I'll write a quick expression on here, which is going to be open bracket, time times maybe 80, and then comma, zero, close bracket. So now our, our pattern will just kind of move from left to right a little bit. I'm going to turn this down some. All right, so this is starting to be a nice looking little bit of noise. Let's go into our noise and uh, I might turn down the contrast. But maybe I'll turn up the brightness some. We've got kind of a flowing organic look. All right, how about we make this more complex now? Let's turn this complexity up and just play around with the contrast of this and maybe displace it a little bit more. Let's make this uh, even wider. We can even go to our turbulence here and maybe let's turn up the complexity on this to maybe three. And we can play around the size and the amount. This is starting to feel like kind of a watercolor painting. All right, so let me walk you through a couple of other specific examples. I've got this marble texture I created. Just 
just with some noise such as turbulent sharp and soft linear. And if I add this displacement layer, I can now turn this value down and get some really interesting shapes. Adding a little bit of turbulence there, it starts to look like just a slab of marble. Now we can colorize this. Let's look at another example here. It's red marble. Here is really just the same things. We've got a gray solid in the back. Here's a very basic fractal noise pattern. And then I've got a couple of just grain layers that are just other fractal noise layered on top of the first one. A particle layer that I just created using a turbulent noise and a starburst effect where I set the speed down to zero. Then I just added a grid on top. And then using this displacement and some turbulence, we can really move these shapes around. One more noise, one more turbulence. And then using Colorama, we can completely recolor what this is going to look like and remap all those grayscale values to colors. So if we just render a bit of this, we've got a nice animated red marble texture. All right, let's take a look at another one. How about this lichen? Again, this is a very complex texture made of some very simple ingredients. So let's take a look at these pieces. Our basic noise with a rocky fractal type set to soft linear. And then when we displace that, it looks much more interesting. Then adding a bit of turbulence. In here, we've got this turbulence set with the complexity cranked all the way up to 10. If I just turn this back to 1, you'll see it just kind of swirls things around. But if we just make this higher and higher, it's going to make a very, very complex looking map. Now I have these values kind of animated a little bit, and I'll show you why in a second here. Here I just have another colorama with a whole bunch of colors in here so that it gets this very organic looking uh, forest floor. All right, so now that I've created that, I can uh, pop that into a new composition, and we can mask out our texture with this text animation that I've done. So when we render that, we can see a nice procedurally generated moss and lichen texture. I've added a few effects in here just to add a little bit of depth. This same kind of technique can work for rust that you saw in the intro. So we're going to walk through that project step by step, and I'll show you how I made it. All right, let's create a new composition. Again, I'm just going to make this 2,000 by 2,000. And I'm going to call this new rust, since I have an old one that I'll be referencing. All right, so let's create a new solid, call this noise, and add a fractal noise effect. And we're going to set the type to rocky. And uh, let me turn this contrast down a little bit. Turn this complexity up some. And uh, we're going to make the size scale this up quite a bit. All right, let's create a new adjustment layer. Call this displacement. And we'll add a displacement map. And we're going to set this to minus 100, minus 100. And you'll notice as soon as we do that, we start to get these black edges. We could wrap this around. But instead, I'm going to add a motion tile effect. And uh, we can just crank up this output width and height. And uh, if we just drop this before our displacement map, that should uh, take care of our problem. All right, let's create a new adjustment layer. Call this Turbulence. And we'll add a Turbulent Displace. And we're going to change the displacement type to Bulge. And uh, the amount to 120 and size to 155. And then again, let's go ahead and crank up this complexity all the way to 10. Now look at that. All right, let's add another adjustment layer, and we'll call this one color. And we'll colorize this using Colorama. So if we go down to our output cycle, uh, we're just going to be changing this a little bit. And we can probably start with one of these presets. Maybe Moldy is a good place to start. And uh, I'll just go ahead and I'm gonna take this first color and just darken it up a little bit. We want something kind of the base metal color, uh, whatever our design wants to look like. So maybe something like that. And uh, I'm probably just going to take out some of these colors. Just got to fiddle around with this a little bit. All right, so here's the scheme I kind of came up with. Some bright oranges in these white areas, and then a few just kind of gray spots here and there. 
All right, so what we want to do is next is just animate some of these noise properties a little bit. So I'm going to get this contrast and start it at beginning, maybe 50. And let's make this maybe three seconds. And we'll just move this up a little bit. And let's go ahead and set some evolution as well. So we'll animate this from zero to some middling mount. All right, let's go ahead and grab both of these keyframes and just give them some easy ease. Now, because this texture is procedurally generated, that means we can add or subtract to it by just changing this black and white map that's at the bottom. So let's just go up and let's just add a new text layer. And let's call uh, this Rust. I like the word Rust. And let's put this right in the middle. And uh, what I want to do is pre-compose this so that we can change it later if we want to. So we'll just call this Rust Text. And then what we can see is if we just drop these below all of these adjustment layers over here, it's going to affect the overall texture, right? Below this color, it's just going to colorize it. If you put it below this turbulence, it's really going to blow it out because it's got this crazy turbulence on it that's very complex. Put it below the displacement, it almost disappears completely. So let's take this text layer and we'll just move it up above our turbulence for now. And if we turn this fast box blur down, we can see it sort of appear there. And if we just blur that a little bit, you see it start to come to life. Now we're going to want this rust to spread out from the center. So uh, let's turn off our text layer for a moment here. And right above this noise layer, let's create a new layer. This is a new solid. We're going to make it white and uh, call it rust mask. Create a mask right in the middle here. And what we want to do is set this to subtract. And then we can animate this mask from uh, very small to very large. So it'll take over this whole image. All right, so now you can see this growing from the center outward. And I'm going to set the opacity of this down just a little bit so it uh, changes the color. And we can add some feather to this mask. So we'll kind of get this highlighted edge a little bit. All right, so now if we turn our Rust text back on, let's do some animation within this Rust text. Let's go back into this composition and click on this, and uh, we're going to add a simple choker. So we can kind of choke down this, these letters uh, at the beginning here. And we'll just animate this up from 0 or from uh, 65 about down to 0. So that choke just sort of falls off. Now let's duplicate this text. In this bottom copy, we can uh, adjust this blur a little bit. Maybe we'll get a little bit bigger. I'm going to duplicate this one more time. This time, let's get the uh, nah, let's take this fast box blur off, and we're going to change the blend mode this one to silhouette alpha. So the blackness of the transparency is going to show through that as it opens up. And uh, some of these copies, we might want to add a rough and edges effect, too. So we can just uh, roughen these up a little bit. Maybe turn the scale down some. And uh, this one might offset a little bit. Maybe it happens a little bit after the others. Let's turn off this color effect. And I think what I want to do is add a little bit more darkness behind this so that the transition feels a little less abrupt. So I'll just take another copy here and uh, maybe darken this, increase that box blur a little bit. Let's just see what it looks like without our color. This is coming what we want. I might just have to have a couple different copies here just growing so that that black spot kind of grows up. All right, let's take these and move them forward a little bit. And I might take a few of these layers. I might set them below the displacement map so they're not quite as regular. All right, so I think this is a pretty good start. Now, because this is procedural, we could go into this Rust text layer and change whatever it says in there. So we could add a logo, whatever pattern we want to rust out of this metal. We could add some particle effects so that uh, some of these kind of bright orange areas that are rusting out could fall down. That would look pretty nice. But I think you get the basic idea.
All right, here's just one more example I want to show you. This is kind of a faux satellite image using a lot of the same techniques, just a basic noise pattern at the bottom with some displacement that creates these uh, sort of folds in the earth. And then if you just add some specific details on top of that, and then uh, you can colorize the whole thing to look like a satellite image. There really are a bevy of possibilities to these advanced noise techniques to create all kinds of procedural textures in After Effects. I'm going to continue this series in the coming weeks by showing you how to make a few other things that I've created, including some procedural wood textures and some more organic, cellular, and biological looking things. So stay tuned for those, and as always, thanks for watching.